there a million Davids against you. Because that's what InfoWars has always been. I think you could call it Operation David in the final equation. Don't take this broadcast for granted. Don't take what we do here for granted because the enemy doesn't like it. Know that. I want to thank you all and salute you for spreading the word. You are the modern Paul Revere's in this eternal fight against evil in Operation David. And that Operation David thing just came to me there. That was teleprompter free, 13 minute long transmission. That's why I said FTC, not SEC with the Mark Cuban situation. And uh, I said for every action, there is a opposite and equal reaction when it's an equal opposite. Either way, I guess. We'll be back. Stay with us. Congressman Jones coming up. We've unseated Maynard. Praise God. You are listening now, to GCN. Now the fight is to decide who Live. we're going to put in place there. One commenter comments that Obama's enemies list is about 53% of the population. Yeah. We see massive persecution against the press, against whistleblowers. We see massive establishment media demonization of Infowars.com. And it's because of you, the listeners, who are empowered and taking action. Keep it up. It's beautiful. Congressman Jones uh, was going to be on right now. He wants to come on after Boehner's statement. Has Boehner come out to make a statement yet? Not yet. We're waiting. All right. The minute the live feed comes, just take over and put him on. Of course, this morning at about 7 o'clock Central, because I was online doing research right when it popped up on DrudgeReport.com, House Speaker John Boehner to resign from Congress in October. Boehner has been a uh, congressman for three decades. Now they want to try to organize... Because the neocons are losing strength fast, and the rhinos, to put a successor just as bad as him in. So that's the big fat fight. Boehner went on to say, there's nothing left to accomplish. Yeah, I guess Obamacare's in. Power plants are shut down. The borders are wide open. ISIS is running wild. The, the gender tranny bathrooms are going in. Uh, the media is promoting pedophilia. Caitlyn Jenner's um, Woman of the Year. I mean, just everything's wonderful. Isn't that just special? Isn't that just sweet? Isn't that just darling? I want to, again, go to break here in a moment and come back with Boehner's statement that's set to happen any moment. And then we have Congressman Walter Jones coming on who spearheaded the movement under massive attack from inside the Republican Party and from without with the Democrats to destroy him. And that's the reason they're coming after the Tea Party is because we've got a real shot at curing the globalist disease. The Tea Party isn't perfect. The Republicans have tried to take it over. They weren't fully capable of doing that, weren't fully successful. Every time they take one group over, another would just pop up. And so now they're killing it from every different angle, and it's still not working. And so now they're just going after myself, Dinesh D'Souza, patriot governors, patriot attorney generals around the country. The Texas attorney general was fighting Obama on every front. And so they just had their minion Democrats at the state level indict him for nothing. Being at dinner and telling folks about what he thought a good investment was and not disclosing at dinner. Wonder who he was having dinner with, that he was involved with the company. I mean, that's the type of crazy town stuff while the White House does stuff 5,000 times, 10,000 times worse, literally. I mean, let's just say it's illegal what he did. You could twist some interpretation of that out. He says it's politically motivated. We told you about it before it even happened. It's just crazy. It's absolutely crazy how out of control... This whole country and this whole world has gotten. And the globalists are making their move right now because they're scared. I never even, in the whole last hour, I even skipped a break. I got to quit doing that. I didn't even plug anything. Uh, it's absolutely imperative that you understand that they hate what we do because it's effective. And it's absolutely imperative you understand that it costs a massive amount of money to have the radio, TV, satellites, the crew, the writers, the editors, the, the insurance, the customer service, the researchers, the investigative journalists, the camera people, just the list goes on and on.
the lawyers to run this operation. We do it on the cheaps, but it's still very expensive. We need to be strong in the face of these attacks. We need to be well-fed, well-trained going into this big battle with the globalists. So I want to thank you all for your support, your prayers, most importantly, and ask you to visit InfoWarsStore.com today and check out the amazing products and great prices and shop with the good guys and help uh, reload us for the next round with the New World Order. All right, Boner is speaking, resigning, stepping down. Here it is, C-SPAN. Uh, that will help our children and their children. We're now on track to cut government spending by $2.1 trillion over the next 10 years. <laughs> they always say that. We've made the first real entitlement reform in nearly two decades. And we've protected 99% of the American people from an increase in our taxes. He's going to say mission we've accomplished. We've done all this with a Democrat in the White House. So I'm proud of uh, what we've accomplished. But more than anything, my first job as speaker is to protect uh, the institution. Oh. A lot of you know that... Uh, now know, uh, that uh, my plan was to step down at the end of last year. I decided uh, uh, in November of uh, 2010 that uh, when I was elected speaker that uh, serving two terms would uh, have been plenty. This is face saving, and, uh, he's been driven out. But in June of last year, when it became clear that the majority leader lost his election, uh, I frankly didn't believe it was right uh, for me to leave at the end of last year. Congressman That's Jones coming on with the truth. The end of this year. So I planned, uh, actually, on my birthday, November 17th, uh, to announce that I was leaving at the end of the year. Uh, but uh, it's become clear to me that uh, this prolonged leadership turmoil uh, would do uh, irreparable harm to the institution. Well, he's being halfway honest. And so this morning, I informed my colleagues that uh, I would resign from the speakership and resign from Congress at the end of October. Now, as you've often uh, heard me say, uh, this isn't about me. It's about the people. It's about the institution. No, the leadership battle exposes what a traitor you are. The awesome site. With your other leadership. Pope Francis addressing uh, the greatest legislative body in the world. And I hope that uh, we will all uh, heed his call to live by the golden rule. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but last night, last night I started to think about this. And uh, this morning I woke up and I said my prayers. As I always do. Pure bold. And I decided, you know, today's the day I'm going to do this. As simple as that. Uh, that's the code I've always lived by. If you do the right things for the right reasons, like Obama the right here. things will happen. And I know uh, good things lie ahead uh, for this house uh, in this country, and I'm proud of what we've accomplished, especially proud of my team. There's a rat you leaving know, a sinking uh, ship. I've been here uh, my 25th year here, and I've succeeded in large part because uh, I've put a staff together and a team together, uh, many of which have been with me for a long time. And, uh, and without uh, a great staff, uh, you can't be a great member, and you certainly can't be a great speaker. I want to thank uh, my family for putting up with this uh, all these years. They have wheelbarrows of tissues. And 35. Uh, their first uh, campaign photo uh, was in uh, July of 1981. And so uh, they've uh, they've had to endure all this. It's one thing for and me all the to millions. endure it. I've got thick skin, uh, but uh, you know, the girls and my wife uh, they've had to put up with a lot over the years. Uh, he's using them as a shield. Let me express uh, my gratitude. Oh, he's going to cry to my uh, constituents uh, who've uh, sent me here uh, 13 times uh, over the last uh, 25 years. Uh, you can't get here without uh, without getting votes. Uh, but uh, uh, and I, I said this often. People ask me, "What's the what's the greatest thing uh, about being speaker, or about being an elected official?" And I said, "Well, it's the people you get to meet." You know, I've met tens of thousands of people in my own congressional district that I would never have met, other than the fact that I decided to run for Congress. And uh, over the years, as I traveled on behalf of uh, my colleagues in the party. Uh, I've met tens of thousands of additional people all over the country. And uh, you meet rich people, you meet poor people, you meet interesting people, and probably a few boring ones along the way. Uh, but uh, I can tell you that 99.9% .9 of the people I meet uh, on the road, anywhere, uh, could, not be, uh, could not be nicer uh, than, uh, than they've been. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been, really, it's been wonderful. Uh, it's been an honor to serve in this institution. And with that, 
All right, Junior, go ahead. Speaker Boehner, you were noticeably overcome with emotion yesterday. Really? Oh, oh what a surprise. <laughs> there was a standing ovation at a Values Voters Summit as Rubio announced Boehner's resignation. There's uh, video of that from C-SPAN. Well, yesterday was a wonderful day. It really was. And uh, was I emotional yesterday? I think I was. Uh, I was really emotional in a moment that uh, really no one saw. Uh, as uh, the Pope and I were getting ready to exit the building, oh, no. we found ourselves uh, alone. And uh, the Pope uh, grabbed my left arm and, and uh, said some very kind words to me about uh, my commitment. Oh, my gosh, you should start crying. <laughs> Put it back on screen. Kids and education. <laughs> Always completely mentally ill. And the Pope puts his arm around me and kind of pulls me to him and says, please pray for me. Well, who am I to pray for the Pope? But I do. The Marxist Pope. If it wasn't the Pope, then what was it? It's uh, all just egomaniacs. So, and listen, it was never about the vote. All right? He's crying because he's on such a power trip. I could survive a vote. So I don't want my members to have to go through this. I certainly don't want the institution to go through this. And so... <laughs> when, He's got you know, the tissue I out. I was, I was thinking about walking out the door anyway. So I mean, right I get a tear in my eye talking about aborted like babies. This guy's just like comfortable doing it. Mr. Speaker, I've heard you say before that a leader who doesn't have anybody following him is just a guy taking a walk. That's right. So, I got plenty of people. I got plenty of people following me. Uh, but uh, this turmoil that's been uh, churning now for a couple of months uh, is not good for the members, and it's not good for the institution. And uh, uh, if I wasn't planning on leaving here soon, uh, I can tell you I would not have done this. If I, if I may just yeah. continue, there are people who are on the right in your caucus and even outside of this institution who have been wanting you to step down for some time who feel that they have a victory today. Do you uh, feel that you, that you were pushed out? No. Uh, the members... Uh, uh, the I'm glad I made this announcement at the conference with all of my Republican colleagues uh, because uh, it, was a, it, was, it was a very good moment uh, to help kind of rebuild the team. Uh, listen, um, I feel good about what I've done. Uh, I know that I, every day uh, I've tried to do the right things for the right reasons and tried to do the right thing for the country. Speaker, how can this not be a moment of turmoil? You said you, you thought about leaving two years ago after it happened, but at the time you said this would have pitched the house in turmoil. You have to keep the government open in a couple of days, debt ceiling. There's going to be... One I'm going to be here for another... Barn burner of leadership. I'm going to be here for another five weeks, and uh, I'm not, not going to leave. Uh, I'm not going to sit around here and do nothing for the next 30 days. There's a lot of work that needs to be done, and I oh, yeah. I'll plan on getting... As much of it done as I can. Like protecting and Obama before, from all his crimes, keeping Obamacare in, keeping the abortion going, blocking the abortion ban votes, doing all the evil things you do, and making sure one of your minions gets in. I would have made regardless of this. There's now an all-out leadership scramble happening. ...with some members of your far-right flank and some outside groups you've used words like knuckleheads and some other words we probably can't use. Because we don't like Obamacare. We're knuckleheads. <laughs> Have you just had enough, and how will anything be different for the next No, no I, I, let me tell you, uh, I would not describe it as, uh, as, as having had enough. Nah, that's not it at all. Uh, when you're the Speaker of the House... You can't move the ball down the road for the New World Order Obama anymore. You're a symbol of evil, just like the Attorney General was. Uh, and having a vote like this in the institution, uh, I don't think is very healthy. And so uh, I've done everything I can uh, over the, my term as speaker to strengthen the institution. Uh, and, and frankly, my move today uh, is, a, is another step in that effort to strengthen the institution. But won't the next speaker face... They've the totally speaker? sold out the uh, Congress. Hopefully not. That's my question, Mr. Speaker. How will Washington be different because you leave this institution? What, what should people watching this expect the House and Congress to do going forward if you're not here? Well... If we, if the Congress stays focused on the American people's priorities, there will be no problem at all. And uh, and while we have differences between Democrats and Republicans, uh, the goal here as one of the leaders is to find the common ground. Listen, I talked to yeah. President foreign banks want to triple President prices Obama's of health care and cut quality. Uh, I you help ram it through and protect it. Uh, uh, leaders, who I have a very good.